maybe you get your Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something most delicious, most palatable, a show for those with an insatiable appetite for the stories behind people, places, and things. What's the Recipe is where host Amanda Fowler chats with creatives, entrepreneurs, and the accomplished to uncover their one-of-a-kind recipe to success. How did they do it? What did it take? Pull up a seat at the table and indulge in the flavors of inspiration, innovation, and insightful dialogue. I hope you're hungry. What is up, guys? Welcome to another Dish It Out episode. I hope you guys are having a lovely Memorial Day weekend. We are in Tampa, Florida. If you haven't guessed by my tan, I am so dark. I get so dark, you guys. I feel like people always ask me if this is my real tan. Yes, I... My dad's side of the family is Sicilian. So we get really, really dark. And uh, the first couple of days that I was here, I was just like nonstop in the pool because one thing about my children is they love a pool. Not so much Ellis. I think he's still trying to figure it out, but Lennox is full send. And the thing is like he can't fully swim. So we were a little nervous about it when we were planning the trip. But we got him and Ella's like a little life vest because we couldn't find floaties anywhere. And he's done really well with floaties in the past. But the first day we were here, we didn't have anything for them. And Lennox was definitely a little afraid. And uh, so we went to uh, like pinch a penny or something and got them like little life vests. And ever since we did that, Lennox's confidence has just been so incredible. He has been in the pool from the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes down for a nap to the moment he wakes up again. Like he is just in that pool constantly, which I feel like in Florida you have to be. And so we are just having a blast. We are staying at Sydney and Jay's house, which if you don't already follow Sydney, Sydney and Jay were actually on our podcast like forever ago. And Sydney is an influencer and a fitness coach. And Jay is her soon-to-be husband. Lucas and Jay actually went to college together. They played football together. And that's how we know them. And we are staying at their house. It's just been a blast. We don't get to see Sydney and Jay as often as we'd like to, obviously, because they're here and we're in Denver. But we actually do plan quite a few trips and get to see each other probably like three to four times a year. And it's just awesome. We love being with them. We're so grateful for them. We're staying at their house. So I I feel like it's a lot. I'm sure you guys listening who have kids, I feel like it's a lot sometimes to ask to stay with people when we have two little kids who are crazy and wild and high energy, but they are just like so welcoming, so generous. And so we're just having the time of our lives. And honestly, Lucas and I were a little nervous about coming to Florida in the summer because I honestly want to say we have not been to Florida in the summer for a for years. Like I think we've always just visited in the fall or like the winter or the spring. This is really our first trip with the boys visiting in Florida during the summer. And I'm so happy because I have been craving a damn pool. I've been craving the ocean. So we're going to get to go to the beach as well. We are here for another week. So we're leaving Tampa tomorrow and we're going to Orlando, which is where Lucas and I are originally from. And I swear living in Denver for living in like Colorado in general for seven years has made me such a baby when it comes to the heat. So I'm really adjusting to this weather, but it's, it's actually welcome because again, like the, the winters, they get me. I feel like I'm getting over the winters. So it's like, Amanda, you have to pick one. You have to pick either somewhere that it's hot or you just got to put up with the winters. So I don't know. I can't ever decide how to be, but we're going to be in Orlando for the next week and spending time with our family. So Lucas's whole family, my extended family. Um, We got to see my brother, which has been really fun. So we are just really soaking up all of our friends and family time out here. And uh, I'm so happy that we did it because it was kind of a last minute plan, a last minute send. And I'm just so thankful that we're able to do this, that Lucas's job is remote and I get to hang out with the kids and I get to just be here One exciting announcement because this episode is a Dish It Out, so we're going to get into some Dish It Out cues. But one thing I wanted to mention, I kind of have an announcement for you guys, and I wasn't sure if I was going to share this yet, and I don't think I'm going to share exactly what it is yet. I really want to just 
protect it a little bit right now and feel it out and and wrap my head around it and like get settled. But I'm going to share a little bit. And I kind of hinted at it towards or in the in the last Dish It Out episode. Sorry if I'm like stumbling over my words a little bit. I was in the pool all day and I'm so tired. Oh, another thing before I talk about the exciting announcement. I posted on my story today. I think that alcohol is not serving my body anymore. And it's wild for me to say that because I've never really taken a break from alcohol. I mean, I have when I was pregnant, obviously, like I've gone nine months, two times without drinking. And I've done like 30 days, no alcohol things here and there, but I really haven't done no alcohol as a part of my everyday lifestyle other than being pregnant. And I feel like I'm going to start doing that because if you aren't familiar with my whole sinus infection, sinusitis saga, I'm not going to get into it. I can do that on another time in another episode if you guys really want to, because I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out. And I've talked about it at length on my social media and I'm kind of just over talking about it. But I have been having the worst sinus issues, like chronic sinusitis, inflammation, congestion, just the works. And I think that alcohol might be the culprit. And I even posted about it today and people were like, yeah, well, it's an inflammatory. So that makes sense. But I was trying to go back in the archives of my memory, which I feel like if you are a mom, you understand that your memory is just kind of like, like mom brain and pregnancy brain, I feel like never goes away. Like I just feel like I'm constantly forgetting shit. But my, I was trying to pinpoint like all of the times that I got sick or got sinus infections in the last six months. And they've always been after a weekend of drinking or even like after a night of drinking. And so I was like, huh, We got back from Portugal and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to drink until we go to Florida. I just, I don't even know if I want to drink on the Florida trip. Like I'm just not feeling it. I wasn't craving it. My body was doing great. I was on an antibiotic and a steroid trying to kick this like sinus infection in the butt. I stopped taking it. I felt okay. And then last night I had two tequila drinks and this morning I have like a scratchy throat. I'm a little congested. I kind of have a headache. I just feel like inflamed and puffy. And I'm just like, okay, maybe it's alcohol. And so I think I'm just going to stop and see how my sinuses go. I also feel like I'm going to go see a integrative practitioner or like a naturopath because it's been on my list, but I've been really turned off by the price because naturopaths and like integrative health practitioners are usually not covered by insurance and their initial appointment cost is like 350 bucks. But then after that, each appointment is like 90 bucks. So I think I'm just going to pull the trigger because honestly, I just need to like get this figured out and I'm really tired of being on antibiotics and going to Western medication. I just feel like it's not serving me and it's not working. So I need to go to my holistic, my holistic people. And again, like I have a background in holistic health coaching and that's kind of what this theme for this district out is going to be is like kind of holistic wellness oriented, how to live a holistic and well life. But I feel like for a while I was just looking for that quick fix because I feel like as a mom, you're so needed all the time. And I feel like I need to be on all the time and feeling like shit because my, my sinuses are just all messed up. It's just not convenient. And I was trying all my holistic things and nothing was working. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get on the antibiotics and hope this works. And I just don't feel like it is. I am going to do my due diligence and talk to an ENT, like get in with an actual ENT doctor because I've seen a physician's assistant from an ENT doctor, but I want to like talk to them about whether sinus surgery would be a good idea based on like how deviated my septum is. I don't think that's the issue though, because I have had a deviated septum my whole life and I've never had sinus infections this bad. So I really do think it's something like underlying. Maybe it's my cortisol. Maybe it's my gut health. Maybe it's whatever, because I do also have eczema. Not me saying I don't want to get into it. And I'm like literally sitting here for the last five minutes talking about my sinuses. (laughs) I digress. Long story short, I feel like I'm going to cut out alcohol for a bit and see how I go with that. But I'm also going to make sure I get in with a holistic practitioner when I am back in Colorado because it's time. It's just worth it. Anyway, the big announcement is 
I got a job, a real in-person job on a payroll job. (laughs) And some of you guys might be like, whoa, what? Like, but you do the podcast, but you do social media, but you're a mom. Like, I didn't know you were looking for a job. And I feel like once I'm actually in the job and everything's going great, I'll, I'll definitely be sharing what the job is because I want you guys to be able to come see me. But right now, I just kind of want to keep it under wraps a little bit until I really suss it out and feel it out. I feel so good about it, but I just want to like get in the job. You know, I haven't started yet. So I want to like get in and then I'll share about it. But I want to talk about a little bit why I wanted to get the job. So I feel like being super transparent about money and like dynamics within a relationship and within a family of how you like provide and and afford your lifestyle is super important because I think for me, it, it inspires me to hear from other families like how they do things financially. And I feel like money wasn't really talked about like for me as a child, like I knew I never had to worry about money, but it wasn't talked about, like it wasn't a conversation. And so I feel like when I got into the real world, I was like, wait, how do I do all these things? What's a mortgage? Like we have a water bill. What's a credit card? Like I just didn't know anything. I wasn't financially literate. And so to be fully transparent, I stopped coaching. I was a mindset and wellness coach, basically like a holistic health coach for two years. And I stopped coaching last like August, fall-ish. And after I stopped coaching, I was leaning more into content creation. So I was making a little bit of income from there. But I want to say since like January of this year, I truly have not been making a dime. And I'm so fortunate that I have a husband who makes enough money to provide for our family and we can really be a sole income household if we want to be. But at the same time, like one, having Lucas make majority of the income, again, we have everything we need, but not necessarily everything that we want to do. And so I feel like, yes, we're we're okay, but there are a lot of other things that I want to do. And for me, money equals freedom. Money equals being able to do what I want to do, not just what I need to do, you know? And it's a luxury. I, I'm, I'm very aware that I'm very privileged. I think for me, as a woman, and this is why I got so heated about like the whole Harrison Butker thing or whatever. And I just want to say, like, I made a video about it and like kind of just like making a funny joke. I want to say, I want to be very clear However, somebody lives their life is completely entitled to them. Like they're so entitled to however they want to live their life. He's entitled to his fucking opinion. That's basically what what I want to say is like, do I agree with his opinion? No, because I don't resonate with that as a woman and a mom. I don't think my only vocation is to be a woman and a mom. I, I just personally don't want that. That doesn't make me feel fulfilled. However, he is entitled to think whatever he wants to think. But that's why I was a little bit heated about that situation also because I'm like do you know what like how much of a privilege it is to literally be a sole income family like most families need a double income and truthfully I want to be a double income household because I want more you know and I don't think there's anything wrong with admitting that like I love my life I'm so grateful and happy and content with my life there are things that I still want to be able to do that I'm not able to do and so One, for me, I was getting really, really, what's the right word? I want to say like I was getting disempowered. I was feeling really disempowered by not having my own money. I also am like, you know what? If anything were to happen, like this is like, again, knock on wood, but like if anything were to happen to Lucas or anything, like I want to be able to stand on my own two feet, hypothetically, right? Like I just want to be able to feel like I am good, right? And not having a steady, secure stream of income because like I, I've i done brand deals here and there on social media, right? But it's not consistent, like it's not secure. So not having some type of stability on my own merit of income was really making me feel disempowered and unfulfilled. Again, for me, money 
success isn't necessarily money, but money is freedom. Like money allows me to do the things that I want to do, to get the things that I want to do, to live the lifestyle that I want to live, to buy the the groceries that I want to buy, the food that actually is nutrient dense, to be able to live in a house that feels comfortable. Like I want to be able to afford the lifestyle that I foresee for myself. And I also want to be able to do it myself. Like I, again, I, I'm so thankful to be provided for, like so grateful for Lucas. For me as a woman, I feel my best when I can also make a buck. Like when I can have my own money that I'm able to either do things for my family, do things for Lucas, provide also for my family or also just like provide for myself. And so that was a big driving factor of why I wanted to get a job. But I was like, you know what? I also really value being a mom and I want to be able to be a mom and also be able to have my own income. But I'm so tired of doing all of my passions and putting pressure on my passions to be the moneymaker. Because truth is, I want this podcast to be my career. I want this podcast to be the thing that I make money on. But it's not that right now. And I don't want to put pressure on the podcast to be the moneymaker and then burn out on this podcast because I'm putting all of my eggs in one basket because I'm putting all of my security and my worth and my... um, like my desire in this podcast to be something that it's just not right now. And I think that there's, you know, a balance. Like, yes, you have to bet on yourself and you have to be consistent. But with podcasting and and passion projects in general, side hustles, they take time. You have to be consistent. They take time to build. And I didn't want to go into my passions with the the desire to make money from them, but that should never be the forefront of a good thing, right? And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a job so that I can feel secure and I'm not operating from a place of desperation when I show up for on social media or when I show up for the podcast. I can just let those things be authentic and I can be myself and I can let those things grow naturally and organically while also having something that's making me income to make me feel secure, And so that's what I did. I also was like, you know what? I am going to be so fucking picky. I've been thinking about this specific job for over a year. Truly, like I, it's been on my radar and I actually applied last year and it just wasn't aligned at the time. And uh, I applied again and I got the job and I'm so fucking excited you guys will will understand why I wanted to get this job when I actually get it and start like get into it and start telling you about it and like what exactly it is. Again, I'm not going to say what it is right now, but it's creative. It's community driven. It is all about like style and fashion and healing and transformation. It blends everything that I'm about, which is like personal style, confidence, expression, self-expression and beauty and spirituality and healing and self-growth and self-care, everything, everything. I'm so freaking excited about it and I can't wait to share with you guys. But all of this to say is I just want, I I share this because like something new and fun is changing in my life and I want to keep you guys updated about it. But also I share this because there was a part of me that was like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on the podcast and I'm not going to do this one thing. But I had to remind myself, like, you know, I only have one life and I feel like I'm going to regret it if I don't see this desire through because I've been wanting to work this job for a while. So I was like, you know what, if I don't do it, I feel like I'm going to regret it because here's the thing, like I could get in this job and not like it. That's that's the truth. Right. Like and even my soon to be boss said that she's like, you know, you could get into this and just not like it. And that's totally fine. And that's why there's kind of like an apprenticeship that that she buffers in because she's like, I want to make sure it's an aligned fit. And I appreciate that because again, like I I do believe that people um, don't really know if it's right for them unless they're in it. And so I am fully aware that like that could be the situation. I don't think it's going to be, but like it could be right. But I know myself and I know if I hadn't, you know, applied for the job, met with the, the gal, got the job and I'm starting the job. If I hadn't tried, I would have been 
so regretful. And so I share this because I, I want to, to remind you guys, if there's something that you want to do and you ask yourself truly, am I going to regret this if I don't do it? You got to do it. If your answer is yes, you got to do it. You have to see it through. You just have to. And again, there's no harm in changing your mind or realizing that you don't like it, but you're not going to know until you try. Like I'm such a firm believer in that. So I just wanted to share that before we get in. I'm super excited. And again, I'm going to be sharing what it is with you guys. Um, but TBD on that. Don't worry. It, it, it won't be too long. It'll be probably like a month or so, but not not too long. Okay, let's get into the dish it outs because I am excited about these. Again, my background is in holistic health coaching. So I got my my certificate through IIN, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and I loved that school. I loved coaching. I just was finding that my passions and my time was wanting to be spent elsewhere. And so I pivoted. But, you know, I would work one on one with women. I worked with women in a group program setting. I worked with women in my membership community through like these cultivating connection circles that I would lead. And we would, you know, journal and meditate and then share what we were journaling about and hold space for each other and talk and just connect. And I miss those. I want to bring those back. And I, I think about it all the time. I've even shared about that that idea of bringing those back. I don't know. It's not the right time yet, but hopefully I can do that again soon. But I would really work with women on how do we improve your mindset? How do we improve your beliefs so that you can really overhaul your lifestyle in a way and become a healthier version of yourself, mind, body, and soul? Like how can we get you to, you know, focus on whole foods and nutrition and movement, but like not in a way that feels like diet culture and not in a way that feels like toxic fitness culture. It's more just like holistic and it's intuitive and it's really you know, about a loving experience with your body versus trying to like change your body and your mind and your soul for an appearance or for other people or like an external result. So that's really what my background is. I would, I would work a lot with women on like hormones, gut health, nutrition, um, just like all of the things, all of the womanhood things. And uh, I'm excited to get into these questions because they, they bring me back to my coaching days. So First question, how do you balance eating healthy and movement with a busy lifestyle? This is honestly really hard. And I don't think that I thought it was hard when I was coaching and momming because one, my kids were a little bit younger and I feel like I I had a little bit more time. Like they weren't as, I mean, who am I kidding? I was breastfeeding. So they were demanding, but like, I don't know. I think when I was coaching, I was so in it that it was easy for me to prioritize. Now I struggle with it because I have the podcast. I do content. I, you know, I'm a mom full time. I am now doing this job. Like, how do I balance it? And I think what I have come to realize, it's all about time management. Like you have to be so diligent with your time where, and and what I mean by that is not like time blocking and like, you know, setting a set routine that you can never waver from. It's more so just like having your tools. So like what are the things in the morning that you need to feel right? Making sure you do those things. And then I'm more so talking about like, okay, let's sit down on Sunday and talk about our week. Let's sit down on Monday night and and but you know before we close our laptop for the day and before we we stop working for the day, like let's go over our schedule for the next day. Being so prepared for the next day is honestly how I balance it. I I was just talking about this today with some of the girls. Like for me, lunch is the hardest thing for me. So like I think for me, the the hardest part of like having a healthy lifestyle for me is not like getting my movement in because I feel like I really do prioritize that. Finding a gym with childcare is super important for me. Finding the time that works for you, but also being flexible. So I think there are a lot of people who like start living a healthy lifestyle and they incorporate nutrition and movement, but they're like, all or nothing with it. Meaning, you know, if they don't go to the gym at 6 a.m. every single day, they they feel like a failure and they stop. That's not what I mean. I feel like you have to find a time that works for you because it, we do help ourselves out when we are on a structured routine because it just takes the guesswork and the thinking out of things. It's easy to show up and, and stay accountable. But 
we also have to be flexible because like life comes first and we do live a busy life. So we need to be able to be flexible. And what I mean by that is like, okay, if I can't go to the gym at 8.30, I know that there's a 12 o'clock class that I can take and there's childcare there. So I'm covered. And so being flexible with your day, I think that's important. Like how can you manage your time to where you have a structure and a routine, but you're also able to implement flexibility within that structure? That's important. I think for me, I, again, I'm good on the on the fitness front. Like I do fit it in. I also just move my body a ton around the house with the kids. So I don't struggle there. But with the eating part for me, I think what's helpful is making sure that I'm prepping meals. And this isn't like, I don't mean like let's prep an entire meal. It's more like let's make sure that there's meat that I can eat throughout the week. Let's make sure that I have lunch foods because I know that we'll cook something for dinner. Lucas usually does the dinner. So I know I'm covered for dinner and breakfast is super easy for me. I'll just have like eggs or I'll do like cheese seed pudding or I'll do like peanut butter toast or something or a smoothie. Like breakfast is fine. Lunch I struggle with because I'm primarily gluten and dairy free. I'm always gluten free. Sometimes I do some like butter or like dairy here and there. I really am trying not to anymore just because sinus issues. But for me, like lunch is like, sandwich food, right? And I can't eat that because I'm gluten-free. So I do struggle with lunch. And I've been so turned off by salads for like a year and a half now. I don't know why I used to be obsessed. But for me, I'm always, I think from my holistic health coaching background, it's super top of mind for me that when I'm planning a meal, it's like, okay, where's my carb? Where's my protein? Where's my healthy fat? Where's my gut-friendly food? Like those, that's my non-negotiables in a meal. Gut-friendly food, fat, protein, carb. And when I think about it that way, it helps me like get the nutrients in. And whether that's literally like, okay, gut friendly food, I'll just like take some spoonfuls of kimchi or sauerkraut. Um, Protein, I'll eat some like leftover cold chicken. Uh, Rice, I'll eat some leftover cold rice. Um, Fat, I'll do some avocado on top of that. And like, if I do that, I'm good. But I think for me, it really is all about preparation. So figure out whether that preparation for you means like Sunday meal prep or whether that means like, okay, I'm just going to make an extra portion for dinner and save that for lunch the next day. First, also pinpoint your weaknesses. Like, is it more the nutrition piece for you or is it more the fitness piece for you? Pinpoint what the weakness is and start with one thing. I think when you try to like overhaul every aspect of your life, it gets really overwhelming. So just pick one thing, start there. But Also, think about what your priorities are for your busy lifestyle. Like, is your work your priority right now? How can you incorporate your healthy lifestyle to not only fit in with your work, but like help you become better and perform better with your work? So do a lot of, I mean, I'm such a visual learner. I also do best when I can like write things out. So I love taking a journal and just like listing things out. Like how, like what are my priorities in life right now? How can I get better how can I use nutrition and movement to supplement those things and perform better? Also, what are my weaknesses within my fitness and my healthy eating? Like, where do I need to work on? What do I need to work on first? And then also from there, making sure that you're managing your time. Because that's really the biggest thing is like, I will not take care of my body if I don't prepare and plan for it. I will skip lunch if I don't prepare and plan for it. So little things like that. Okay, next question. I feel like I have chronic headaches. Do you have any natural remedies? Girlfriend, you are preaching to the choir. I struggled with these weird headaches for literally like three weeks. And I think whenever, because I also like get random headaches here and there. I don't get chronic headaches. I feel like if they're really chronic, I would go see a headache specialist or like get a CT scan just because I'm all about like making sure I'm dotting my I's and crossing my T's. But what I want to say for headaches like that you sh- could probably try first, for me, headaches are completely tied to hydration and sleep. If I did not get a lot of sleep, I will have a headache. Or if I am, well, two things with, with hydration. If I am really dehydrated, I will get a headache. So I need to have electrolytes. Like Living in Colorado, I probably have electrolytes every single day. And I notice on the days that I don't have electrolytes, I get headaches. The other thing with hydration is I notice that if I don't drink coffee sometimes, 
I get a headache. And when I drink coffee, the headache goes away. So that's why electrolytes come in handy because I've noticed if I don't drink coffee, but I have electrolytes that morning, I won't get a headache, even if I haven't drank drank coffee yet. So play around with that. Really check your sleep, check your hydration levels and make sure that those things are in check. And I feel like your headaches might get better. Headaches can also be hormonal. So making sure that your hormones are in check. Um, I would probably go see an acupuncturist. I recommend acupuncturists for hormone health all day, every day, especially because naturopaths are so expensive. Go see an acupuncturist. They can usually get you right. But I hope that helps. And I'm sorry because chronic headaches are the worst. Next question, how to, uh, oh, holistic lifestyle swaps. What are your favorite holistic lifestyle swaps? I think when it comes to holistic lifestyle swaps, you kind of have to start small and slow again because it can be really overwhelming. And so when I think of holistic lifestyle swaps, for me, that just means like, how can I take something that is already in my life and just do the natural version of that? So like, let's take sugar, for example, and food. Let's do food. When you're thinking about holistic lifestyle, holistic swaps for food, it's basically like, okay, instead of having like a bar, like a granola bar with a lot of sugar in it, how can I make that granola bar at home with natural sources of sugar? So like, how can I switch my sugar from, you know, um, artificial sugars or just like a lot of sugar or, or even just like cane sugars, right? To something that's a little bit more nutrient dense. So even like coconut sugar is better because it has vitamins and minerals in it or dates, honey, maple syrup. How can I use those things instead of like table sugar? The other thing is like, let's start with your, your cleaning products. Go on the EWG's website and literally like search all of your cleaning products, all of your skincare products, all of your body products, like everything. So like home products in the home. And on the EWG website, they have a database that can show you kind of like the toxicity levels. I feel like whenever people go and get into like holistic lifestyle swabs, they go extreme really quick. And uh, I just don't think it's realistic to be that extreme in in our everyday lifestyle, our modern day society, if you will. At least for me, it's not. I have two kids. Sometimes it's just like pick your battles. I try to be as holistic as I can, but it's not always like what I can do all the time or what I really want to do all the time. And so I feel like the EWG's website is really great for that because I can see what the toxicity levels are. And sometimes the, the toxicity of a product is more so just like allergies, like risk of allergies, like the fragrance in it. And so if you're somebody that's not really allergy prone, like you might be fine with that product. So the EWG's website is actually really great for holistic swaps. I also feel like there are a lot of people who do that as a career, like how teaching you how to swap your home products and your cleaning products into something that's a little bit more holistic. I love the brand Branch Basics. I also feel like it's helpful to go to like health food stores and shop there. So I go to natural grocers pretty much every single time and they have pretty much all of their products are either like natural or organic. So I feel like I'm usually betting on something safe when I'm there. So making sure you're like shopping smarter, not harder, like go to places that are just going to have it for you. So you don't have to think too much. And then also the EWG's website is really great for that stuff. They have a whole database. Okay. Next question. How do you find out who you really are? (laughs) Oh girl, how much time do we have? I think that this is a really long process and I don't believe in self-actualization, which means that like I don't believe in ever really truly finding out who the fuck we are and like knowing everything, right? I think we're constantly evolving, we're constantly changing and we're constantly learning and I think that's beautiful. I would say start with a journal. <laughs> God, these dish it out sessions should literally just be renamed to like journal sessions, like for real. I feel like you need to get acquainted with yourself now. So instead of like, I think when people are like, who am I? Like self-discovery, what? They get really overwhelmed and they're like, I have to go find myself. When you're like, no, you're literally right here. You don't need to go look for yourself. Girlfriend, look in the mirror. You're right here. I found you. Like, you're here. (laughs) Get a journal and just get acquainted with yourself. Just get to know yourself. You don't need to find who you are. You just need to get to know who you are. And so get a journal, write down like 
What are the things that I like? What are the things that I don't like? What are the things that bring me joy? Who are the people that bring me joy? Why do they bring me joy? I think getting curious is just super important and being honest because I think when you start to get honest with yourself, people are like, oh, do I actually like these people or do I actually like these this job? Do I actually like these clothes? Like, what do I like? And then you get honest with yourself and you're like, no. And then it kind of overwhelms you because you're like, well, who who am I then? What do I like? But from there, you get to experiment, you get to explore. But the first step is you got to get acquainted with yourself. I love tools like human design because it can help you feel really validated in the things that you already know about yourself, but maybe like haven't allowed yourself to explore. I love astrology for that too. I feel like there are so many different things like Enneagrams, things like that. But again, it can be as simple as just journaling. Like, what do I like? What do I not like? Simple as that. Okay, next question. I have no idea what makes me truly happy. How do I find out? Again, I think that you have to take a journal (laughs) and you have to write down like all of the things that are in your life. So write down a list of the things that you do. Write down what your career is. Write down what your friends are. And literally get so honest with yourself and be like, are these things making me happy? If they're not making you happy, then you know that that you need to change. I think, again, it's less about like, let's go find what makes me happy and let's talk about the things that aren't making me happy right now. That's your starting point versus being like, I have to now find what makes me happy. No, think about what's not making you happy right now, because that's an easier launching pad than like going out blindly and exploring things that you don't really know that you like. But I think that you also have to get really on like this work isn't for the faint of heart. I want to just put that out there. You have to be so honest with yourself. And if you're not ready and willing to do that or to be that yet, like that's okay too. But start slow. Don't get hard on yourself. Like have compassion for yourself and really be honest and be curious. Okay. Next question. How do you nourish yourself? Okay, this is the last question. How do you nourish yourself? I'm going to give you guys like, how do I specifically nourish myself? Because I think it could be helpful to like give you guys ideas. I need alone time. And the reason that I need alone time is because I've always been this way. I've always been somebody that just like really values time with myself. But at the same time, I also know my human design and I have a two line in my human design profile, which is like the hermit profile. Basically, this means that I channel who I am. Like I I get connected to myself and to spirit through being alone. And so for me to nourish myself, to get myself right, to bring my nervous system down, to get my stress levels down, to really nourish myself, I need to be alone. So I love baths. I love disconnecting from social media and, and technology. I love reading. I love doing anything that just is like intentional uninterrupted time by myself. I go and spend a lot of time at coffee shops, but like by myself in my own energy. And I think that you have to just get really clear about what actually makes me feel nourished. Like what, what is nourishment? Right. And for me, that's fulfillment. Like I am nourishing myself when I'm feeling fulfilled and I'm giving myself what I need in the moment. So I know that I need alone time. I give myself that. So ask yourself, maybe your nourishment, maybe your form of nourishment is actually being around other people that you love. And so that's a way to nourish yourself. But again, you have to get really clear. I think a lot of this work is like, you have to get so clear with yourself through curiosity. That's what it is. Be like, you almost have to like date yourself. Like, Go on a first date with yourself. Get to know yourself. Journal. Like ask yourself questions in your journal. I think that a lot of it is like just constantly chipping away at the version of yourself that was conditioned to be a certain way so that you can access the version of yourself that is truly lying underneath all of that conditioning and asking, begging, waiting for its time to shine. So I know this is a really quick episode. I just wanted to get something out for you guys because Again, I really want to be consistent with this podcast and I want to have a constant 
connection and communication with you. And uh, I also just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. Again, I'm just so excited about, I feel really fulfilled in life right now. Like I, I just want to say that, like, I feel really content. I'm so fucking tired right now because of just sun, pool, people having two drinks, but I just feel really fulfilled and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you guys who listens. I've seen so many people showing out on the YouTube and like watching the YouTube videos. I just love that because I think that you can see more, you can feel the energy more when you're on video. And so I love that you guys are watching on YouTube. I love my girlies who listen on Apple and Spotify in the car or in the house doing chores. Like I just love all of you guys. And I'm so grateful to have an audience who like actually cares and um, that I can, I can connect with. It's really cool. So thank you guys so much for listening. I will see you guys next Sunday. There's going to be an episode out this week as well. And again, if there's anything specific you guys ever want me to talk about on the podcast, what's the recipe to anything? What's what's the secret sauce? What's the ingredients to this? Or what is the story behind this person? Just let me know. I am wanting to create content on here that feels good for you guys. I always have my agenda and I always have my inspiration and my own creative direction, but like I I truly listen to what you guys have to say and what you guys want to hear. So again, if you guys have any ideas, shoot them my way on Instagram or on TikTok and I will see you guys in the next episode. This one is officially 86. Bye.